Um, section 24 of your bill, which is, deals with provisional ballots, on um, page 16, um, there are th uh, three grounds for having to cast a provisional ballot. Uh, one is if you are unable to provide a photo ID, another is if your registration is challenged, and the third is if your eligibility to vote is challenged and as required by Section 204C-12, uh, which I have in front of me. And I, I was, you know, I was thinking about what Representative Murphy was, was saying. We, had, we did have a number of people who came here and testified last week on, on this bill in support of this bill based on their experience as poll challenges. <coughs> And um, it's important to understand that an election judge is a, is a job to administer <coughs> elections. A poll challenger's job is to be in the polling place and to tell people uh, and to, to um, raise suspicion about people and challenge their ability to exercise the right to vote. And so your, your provisional ballot system says that if you are challenged, according to this uh, challenging statute, which isn't, doesn't really give grounds for challenge, just says if you're challenged, you fill out a provisional ballot. What is there in this bill to stop an organized political party from sending out challengers to precincts and challenging uh, thousands of voters in order to require them to fill out a provisional ballot? And then, cr and then in your bill, if, if you live in a rural area, you have to travel a great distance in order to get your vote counted. Even if the ground basis for the challenge was frivolous, you've got no remedy except to try to travel to the, the um, auditor's office. In the metro area, um, at least in Hennepin and Ramsey County, not only, it might not be a great distance, but certainly uh, it costs you money to go down to pay for parking and do those things to have your vote counted. So based on completely... Um, unaccountable, frivolous challenges, which may be part of an organized effort to suppress turnout in certain areas, which we have seen, not so much in Minnesota, but we've seen in other states. Uh, we have seen organized efforts to suppress voter turnout. Um, it, this bill makes it really easy to do that. You just have to show up, challenge the voter, and then uh, they have to bear the burden of having their vote counted. Um, and it seems to me, you know, I don't know if you have an answer to that, but it seems to me you're, you're really opening the door not for greater election integrity, you're opening the door for more mischief, more suppression of the vote, in, in, and more games to be played by partisans who uh, have organized poll challengers, as we've heard from uh, in this committee. Representative Kiltmeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Winkler. You know, Representative Winkler, as an attorney, I think you know well how to read the law, and on that same bill and that law that you have in front of you, it is not just a voter whose eligibility to vote is challenged with a period. It says, as permitted mm -hmm. under Section 24C.12, there is a process by which you go through. It isn't just simply saying, I challenge you uh, on those things. There needs to be a, uh, and a challenge, by the way, is a question from a challenger to the election judge. And then it is up to the election judge to review that challenge. But there is a process in 204C.12 that, uh, that it includes here as well uh, for that. And that is the same challenging process that we have in current law. Uh, Representative Winkler. Mr. Chair, Representative Kiffmeyer, uh, yes, but the process for challenging is quite loose. And there is. Um, there's really, you're, you're just putting a local an election judge uh, in the position of having to deal with these challengers and if you, challenges. And if you have an organized effort to challenge uh, voters based on where they live, you're going to quickly overwhelm the uh, election judges. And the only real safeguard here is that the challenger has to be a resident of Minnesota and has to uh, give an oath saying why they're challenging. And it seems to me if this oath is such a great protection for a poll challenger, why isn't an oath uh, that you are who you say you are when you sign a polling place roster not good enough? What you're doing is shifting the burden from voters. Uh, I'm sorry, you're shifting the burden from um, people who want people to not vote onto people to, to allow them to vote, especially in rural areas. And I, it just seems like you're creating Amp all this fertile ground for mistakes and for organized efforts to, to suppress the vote um, for real, no real purpose. 
Representative Kipmeyer. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Representative Winkler, <laughs> you know, we have a, a situation here where you're dealing with a hypothetical. Uh, in regards to that, we have current law that um, already allows for <coughs> challengers and as permitted in current law. So I'll just uh, stick with that and we've been using this uh, for quite a long time here in Minnesota. 